We will be using the six and a half curved ruler on this lesson, and in particular, for spacing, we'll be using the second line in, or the three-quarter inch mark. For this outer border, we want to do a little prep work first. So the first thing we're going to do is measure over three inches for, from your cornerstone. And then we're going to make marks every six inches all the way down the side of this border. When you get to the end, and you're approaching the next cornerstone, there should be another three inch space. So you'll have three inches beside each cornerstone, six inches in between each one, other one. Once you get all the marking done, we'll go to the next step. Now that we have all the marks made across and around the border, we're now ready to do the second phase of the stitching. What we're going to do is we're going to take our curved ruler, we're going to sink our needle in the corner, we're going to put the ruler so it's a quarter of an inch away from the mark, and we're going to stitch down. We're going to take our ruler, right now it's this way, we want to turn it this way. And now we're going to take advantage of the gold squares. And we're going to place it so that we're a quarter of an inch away between these two blocks in your border. And we're going to stitch up. Now we're going to repeat the same thing. And basically what you're going to do is repeat this same process all around your border. We have the ruler with the curved side going towards the right. And we're going to stitch down to our mark. Because this ruler is the same size curve on both sides, we can take the ruler and put it this way, or we can put it this way. And basically what we want to do is follow the curve up to the intersection between these two blocks. Now we're going to turn the curve the other way. Come down a quarter of an inch away from your mark. And we want to get that blue thread out of there. And come down to the mark. Now we're going to continue in this manner until we go all the way around the border. Back up to the intersection between those two blocks and the border. The one nice thing about having a pieced border, we had to mark out six inches down here, but you're supposed to mark every three inches up here. Well, our blocks are three inches, so that marking has been taken care of. So we're going to continue to go around the entire quilt border in the same manner. And if you look real close, as you're stitching these, they almost resemble a sailboat. So if you don't see what looks like a sailboat when you're doing your quilting, or a sail on a sailboat, it goes like this and you've turned your ruler the wrong way. So continue around in the same manner until you get back to the beginning. So we've gotten to this point on the border 
by stitching from left to right. Now we're going to stitch from right to left. And we're going to do that <clears throat> by putting the second line of our ruler on the previous line of stitching, like so. Let's pull up our bobbin thread. And let's get our upper thread where we want it, underneath the foot. <clears throat> okay, we're ready to start. I've got my ruler on the previous line of stitching and I'm ready to stitch up. Now I'm going to stitch down the ditch until I get to the point that I can put the ruler on that line of stitching and stitch down. Now we're in this small corner right here so now we're going to work over here along the ditch. And now we were going this way with our, our ruler this way. Now we want our ruler to be the opposite way. So I need to stitch up this line of stitching approximately three quarters of an inch so I can put this ruler on the line of stitching. And let's work up. Get some of the drag off of this quilt. There we go. And walk along the ditching line. Put a ruler back down so that it's on that line of stitching. And come back down. Now we want to stop when we get to the next row of stitching right there. Now we're going to climb back up that line of stitching. Put our ruler down and work back up. Get our ruler on that line of stitching again to the next line of stitching. Walk up that line so that's one portion done or two portions actually so now let's walk down here So we had our ruler going this way, now we want our ruler to go this way. So that means we need to walk down this line of stitching approximately three quarters of an inch so that we can put this ruler with the second line on the line of stitching. And now we'll work down. So it's on the second line again, and let's work up, and we'll stop at the line of stitching before it, walk down, get it on the second line, walk down, on the second line, second one and walk back down again. Now we have three sections filled. 
Now we need, we, were, we had a ruler this way, now we need to turn our ruler instead of this way, we want it to go this way. So we're going to come down here, so if we want to turn the ruler this way, we have to make sure that we walk up that line of stitching about three quarters of an inch. Let's go up there. Now we can put that ruler down on the second line of stitching. And I actually walked up a little too far, so let's come back down. Take some of the drag off. Now, I want you to see this right here. That's what happens when your quilt falls off the edge of your table. So let's take a minute. I'm going to take that out and we'll come back and re-sew that. Okay, we're ready to try that one again. So I'm going to start here. We're going to work up. Move up to the seam line. Work across. So we can get that line of stitching on the second line. Work back down until we get to the line of stitching going the other way. Work up that line of stitching. And put a roller back down. Work over. Work down, work up that line of stitching, and after you do this a little while, you'll be able to guesstimate about how far up that line of stitching you need to go. Now we're going to walk over on this stitch. You can use your straight ruler foot here if you need to. And now, we were going this way, now we want to go this way. So we're going to come down this line of stitching right here until we can put this ruler on the line of stitching going this way. Now we're there, and now we stitch down. Walk up. And we're going to continue on like that, just alternating the way we're doing our stitching. And as we do that, it forms this really neat pattern on the border. Sort of a, a little bit of a twist. And it's not an easy or not a hard pattern to do. It looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Can you see that? So there's your finished quilt with all the borders quilted. There's a close up in the top right hand corner. And I'm going to come back with one more lesson on how to do a machine sewn binding.